here. She is kind enough to be joining us via the magic of Skype. There she is, Cynthia Calvillo. How are you, Cynthia? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. <laughs> well, it's good to talk to you. Uh, and and let me let me actually uh, expand on that. I asked you how are you doing. It has been, I'm sure, a very disappointing time for you. How are you dealing with all of this? Yeah, it's it's been a it's been pretty crazy. I mean, I, I I worked really 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 hard for this, and now I just feel like it's just like like I'm frozen right now, and I can't do what I you know love doing, which is fighting. And like, uh, there's just been a lot of changes, a lot of stuff going on, and you know this this just kind of adds on to it, and it's very unfortunate. I did, like seriously it breaks my heart. I'm not gonna be competing for. I mean, nine months, luckily. I mean, it's already past three months, but still, it's pretty crazy. When did you find out about the the positive test, and what was your reaction to that? Before you found out about USADA and Nevada, just the initial news. Uh, I found out about two weeks after, uh, in in mid-January, two weeks after my fight. Okay. So, uh, the news, and it was the same time I was... I had the contract for my next fight already set up and the very a few hours later, you know, I got a call from Dana letting me know that I'd failed the test and it was just kind of like a really, really good day turned into a really bad day. <laughs> oh wow. Who was that fight against, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's it's sorry, I'm probably not I don't even know if I'm I'm I don't know. I'm not in, I don't know if I'm like uh well it was yeah, I'm not. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but I, I guess it shouldn't matter. But yeah, um, I was supposed to uh, be fighting Michelle Waterson, um, but it didn't happen. So okay, okay. And, I mean that's well, something that we're looking forward, to, looking as one of the options at least. I mean for the next bout, but when was that supposed to be? Um. April May, we, uh, we hadn't like really discussed it, but that was pretty much what we were going towards. Um, at that time, they didn't have the location or, or date. Um, so uh, it was just what we were looking, you okay. know, because it was like two weeks after my fight. Just trying to see what the next fight was going to be, the next step after my last fight. And now, you know, the, the, the story of marijuana testing, it's, it's, it's a controversial one because we've seen situations where, Someone has a medical marijuana license in the state which they live. You live in the state of California. We saw this with Nick Diaz. And then you're being tested, and we don't know how long it's in your system, metabolites, and then you're, you're getting punished for it. Are you willing to explain, like, when was the last time you smoked um, or consumed marijuana and whether or not this is even fair to be punished at all? Yes. So um – I consumed marijuana, which they tell us to like, they're, they're comfortable about it as far as like, you know, how much time we would need to be cleared for in, in competition testing, you know, as far as like, um, the last time I, I had consumed cannabis was, uh, on Christmas Eve, which was the week of the fight. I usually use it for sleeping. I do use it for inflammation. I have had my medical card for over two years, um, it's something I use, especially because I broke in my I had an injury where I broke my arm three times in a row, and it is proven that C, the component in you know cannabis CBD, does help uh, you know heal your bones. And I was also having trouble sleeping for a long time, which is a lot better than using any over the counter stuff, you know. And um, you know, it's something that I, I had discussed with Jeff. Novinsky before I even once I got into the UFC, you know, as far as the, the using of marijuana, you know, usage of, of marijuana. So I've done the same thing for every single fight. I've been tested as soon as I get to the arena every day, of my like every from, you know, the day of my fight. And, and it's never been an issue before. For whatever reason, it was, uh, you know, I don't know if it was a weight cut, maybe I didn't hydrate properly. You know, there's a lot of factors that pay into as far as, you know, why it, I tested positive. I mean, they have the threshold, the metabolites, it's like pretty high. Mm -hmm. So they say it's like, you have to be literally like super, super high, you know, in order for you to test positive that high, you know, like the day of your fight. But there's no way in hell, there's no way in hell I, I smoked or, or took any type of cannabis the week of my fight at all. Like, you know, let alone the day of my fight, I just, you know, it's, I don't see it as, as something that's going to enhance my performance. I don't use it. I don't think that it's going to help me in, in any kind of way in that way whatsoever. So 
it's just it's just very unfortunate because I really thought that I was like following the rules, it's following the regulations. A lot of people were like, hey, you know, well, you know the rules, you're not supposed to be using it. So it's not so much that, you know, they said that they 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 say that you can use it and they sometimes like advocate for it, you know what I mean? It's just like for athletes, it's something good for them to use, you know, for concussions, for inflammation, for there's a lot of usage, you know. So they tell us it's okay to use it. It's okay to use it as long as you don't use it in competition. Here are the guidelines, you know, quit so-and-so, you know, maybe three days. Sometimes they tell you, and I've heard it before, other athletes, are like, they will tell them, like, hey, three days is more than enough, you know what I mean? And even then, I did not use it within three days just to make sure, you know. Uh, it just it just really sucks, you know. If, if there was a chance, if, I, if they didn't make me feel so comfortable about it, and if there was a chance that I could have tested that high and I could have still failed my test, I wouldn't have done it. You know, I trained so hard. I, I've, I've, I've had success that I have because, because you know, I put this first. I prioritize this. Like, forget about weed. If they told me, if they told me that I need to not be doing this at all just to make sure it doesn't happen, then that I would follow it. I, I would make sure of that. But I really didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Like, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to be a rebel. I'm not trying to, you know, just, I don't know. It's just, it, it just, it just really, really, it really sucks that you know I'm in this position right now. Um, I'm, you know, I can't work. I can't make any, I can't work and do what I want for nine months. You know, uh, I've lost sponsorship, you know, I'm gonna have to pay a fine. Like I had my next fight lined up. Now I don't have that anymore. You know, it's just, it just really sucks. And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Me. It, it, it's embarrassing that I have to, you know, do this in front of my parents and, and, you know, for them to see that is just, it sucks because, I was actually pushing for my dad who has rheumatoid arthritis. I was trying to convince him how, like, you know, like trying to show him the benefits of, of cannabis and, you know, really wanted to advocate for it. And then I was just sitting here and being in trouble for it and, you know, being out of a job or, you know, not, not working for the UFC, being able to do what I'd love to do for nine months is just, it's crazy. It's, it's really crazy to me. You know, I'm the least person they need to worry about. I mean, the Nevada State Commission is like find other people six months for performance enhancements drugs, but that they're gonna find they're gonna suspend me for nine months for cannabis for something that I use for sleeping or for inflammation. You know, that's not gonna hurt me or my body, and it's not gonna hurt any opponent that I'm like fighting against. It's not enhancing any kind of way, and you know that it's legal there. There's a lot of people in the commission that actually are involved in like you know the the dispensaries and then that business. So it's just kind of it just it just kind of sucks. It sucks the stigmatism that it has. It sucks that, you know, people are just looking at me like I'm just kind of stoner and I don't care and, like, just do whatever I want. It's it's not even about that. Like, you know, it's just, it, it's just, it's really, it's just really unfortunate. And and just to be clear, uh, you, you, you last smoked on December 24th. That's not unusual. Like, that's, th that time frame between the 24th and your fight on the 30th, you usually stop around that time, correct? That that wasn't like you pushing the limit or saying, I'm going to sneak this in here right before, right? Correct. And was that in California? It's like more than enough. Yes. That's the part that drives me nuts. You were doing it in, in a state where it is 100% legal for you to do it. You have a license, all that stuff. So how could they determine if you're doing it before the fight, uh, 24 hours, 48 in Nevada, where you may not have that. That's the part that really gets me. They, they can't. I mean, the urine analysis doesn't prove, you know, like I said, whether you're high actively, you know, and like what's considered in competition would be that you would have to be actively high. I guess it's like eight hours prior to eight hours after. Right. You know, and like, there's no way to prove that with the urine analysis. I mean, they can prove out their blood, but they're not going to take the blood. They can prove that with maybe saliva, you know, they take a swab, they can, you know, show whether you use it within eight hours, you know. They need to use other means of it, but at the same time, it's I don't even think it's something that should be on the banned list, you know. I mean, if they can't appropriate test for it to really prove whether I'm high, actively high, like, that's it's not fair. It's oh. just, it's it's not fair. When you received the USADA suspension, because that was the next piece of news, the six months, but with the chance to reduce it to three, obviously you were disappointed. You mentioned all, you know, the, the embarrassment, all that stuff. But were you kind of at peace with it? Did you think, okay, this will be over in three months or less than three months at that point, and I'll just kind of move on with my life? Were, were you okay at that point? Yeah, absolutely. I th I thought that uh, you know, obviously I was I was really bummed out, but I really thought that you know I didn't I didn't think the Nevada State Commission was gonna 
give me a nine month suspension. Honestly, uh, I didn't really realize it until like the day before my hearing. Um, because when I was talking to Jeff Nowitzki and, you know, I just went in contact with a few people in the UFC and we were just like working towards this and like, you know, people in Osada and, you know, that we were all looking and hoping to see that maybe the Nevada State Commission would do the same thing, whether they'd be a six months or, you know, and then allowed me to at least do some kind of program, you know, to get that reduced and stuff. But they don't even have the option for that. It's it's just they just pretty much just gave me nine months and they find me and I'm just sitting here and for something really stupid, you know, it's just. I, I, it just, it's just mind boggling. Like I see, there's so many athletes and even other athletes that are using marijuana the night of their fight, but because there's not going to be a SADA testing you there, you know what I mean? It doesn't like matter. So it's like, it doesn't matter as long as you don't get caught, I guess, you know, you know? but it's just, it, it's, it just sucks. I really don't think I, I, I was doing anything wrong. There, you know, there's guidelines. I thought I was following them. I thought I was, I, I was, you know, I used it. With, I quit using it more than enough, giving it enough more time to make sure that, uh, you know, as far as I was advised, that that was more than enough time to like clear me that I wouldn't at my test, I wouldn't test that high in the threshold. But, you know, that, that, that that's what they figured. They thought that was going to help the fighters or the athletes is by leveling up the threshold. They didn't completely take it off the ban list, but they figured that if they, they up the threshold, then, you know, based on their studies, they thought that they were going to be able to determine, you know, that's going to be nothing more than enough. It can still show up in your system, but it can't be this high, you know? Right. But guess what? It still showed up in my system really high. Like, it, there's no way to determine, really, you know what I mean? Uh, they got to use other means or they got to take it off. Um, with Nevada, can you appeal this? Is there is there any chance of, of fixing this, or is it nine months and that's it? From... From what I was told, speaking to to Jeff, uh, you know, uh, and Hunter and a few other people, they 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 told me that I can't, and then and it's kind of one of those things where it's kind of it's kind of like okay, I already served three months, I have six months, I'm gonna sit here and try to fight it and maybe prolong it and probably pay more money to fight it, or do I have to just sit here and just kind of deal with it and then just wait till September comes around, you know, and that's a that's six more months, and so it's just kind of one of those things, is it? I'm, I'm hoping that these policies changes, like moving forward, I have to make sure that this doesn't happen again with whatever I need to do, whether it's just not use it for a whole month or, or find other ways, you know? I mean, honestly, for me, I, I've used it a lot for, for, for inflammation, something that I have used for, for, for a couple of years already, especially with injuries. And like, it's helped me out immensely. I, I, I don't use any other painkillers. I don't use anything else, you know? It's just like, and it's not harming anybody, and it's just, like, helping me, and it's benefiting. Like, I feel like a lot of athletes should actually be using it even after their fights, especially, like, football players or anybody who's, like, playing in a combative sport anywhere where you're going to be, like, constantly, like, just, like, you know, hitting yourself. And it's, like, it's proven to help that it helps you. And so there, we're being punished for, you know, there's something it's on there. And I understand it's on there. It's not like I didn't know it wasn't allowed in competition, but I wasn't using it in competition yet. I'm still getting in trouble yep. for it as if I was. Yep. Uh, it's crazy. Um, did you hear from the Nevada? Like, were you at that hearing and did they give you a reason why they felt like they needed to give you nine months as opposed to the six that USADA gave you? No, I guess that's just what they've had since in uh, regulations since, uh, which I didn't know. I just thought maybe they were going to work something out. I mean, just because they were saying that they were working on changing the policy of getting the um, weed is something that was in discussion last year in January. Yeah. And it, it looked like, you know, going towards that way. And, you know, it, 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 I don't know. It just, it just seemed that way. It seemed once I got into the UFC and I, and I seen, you know, cause that's one, something I, I, I talked to Jeff about before. Cause I had a, a last minute fight when I took that fight with Amanda Cooper you know, those are two weeks notice fight. And that was just something that I did think about. I was like, hey, you know, I, I do use cannabis, you know, for, for sleeping. I do use it for inflammation. Um, is that going to be played into a factor, you know, you know, if I quit like right now? And then like, just, I, you know, they're like, no, 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 you should be fine. Uh, you know, with the new, with the regulations, as far as the threshold, as long as you quit, you know, a week out and, and you'll be fine, you know? And so 
I was still a little worried, a little worried because you never know, you know what I mean? But I, I had the fight and I tested it, like, you know, I had my test and, and everything was fine. I was like, okay, cool. Then, you know, it's not a problem. You know, as long as I don't use it in competition, then it's not an issue, you know? And so that's, that's how I felt about it ever since I, I got in. I never, I never thought anything of it. I didn't think, because I, I don't see any benefit of, of using marijuana the day of your fight. I, I just, I just don't, uh, you know, it's just, so it's just crazy. I just never thought that it was just going to be an issue for me. I mean, just the way the laws are going, you know, you can legally use it here in California. You can legally use it in Vegas. Like, it, it, it's just, uh, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It just, you know, I thought, you know, times were changing, but apparently not, not in Nevada. <laughs> well, last year you had one of the great like rookie years in, in UFC history and you did it in a very short amount of time. Um, and of course the year didn't end well, but it didn't take anything away from what you accomplished. I mean, right. All of a sudden you're fighting a former champion. You're on the cusp of, of fighting for a belt. If you beat Carlos Barza, um, we haven't heard much from you even before, you know, the, the marijuana stuff came out. How were you handling the loss? Uh, and, 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 and looking back, what went wrong that night against Carla? Um, I honestly think I just, I just wasn't there, uh, I was just focusing on the, on the wrong things. I just wasn't there uh, mentally. I was. I felt like I was in the best shape of my life, actually, for that fight. I prepared very, very well. Um, there was just, like, other other personal factors, you know, that were in my in my mind. And um, I, I just I just started headhunting, you know. I just, like, you know, I, I... We had so many things that we had trained for, and I felt so good, and I just, like, felt like there was no way I'm going to lose this fight. I just felt amazing going into it. And, you know, sometimes things just don't play out that way. You can't go in there thinking that you're just going to, like, win no matter how, hard or how great you feel. Um, once I was in there after my first round, you know, my my game plan was, like, you know, I'm going to take her down, and, you know, I'm going to beat her up a little bit. She gets out of the first, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to knock out. I'm just going to, you know, standing and, and just showcase my stand-up because I had been working on it a lot. And, and, you know, my sparring sessions, I was looking really, really good. You know, I, I, I felt really confident and it, it just didn't come out, you know, and it, it, it was what it was. I was a little like, obviously upset with the decision when it, when it first, uh, when it first came out, happened, like, you know, in the cage, but after looking at, at the fight, you know, it's just as far as, you know, she's a veteran. She outscored me with, like little like shots, you know, that just kind of added up and, you know, and, and, you know, also, you know, as far as how they score takedowns, you know, she took me down, but it didn't help me down. And, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of things. It could, there's a lot of things in there, but, you know, I always want to leave it to the judges. You know, my coach, Justin Buckles, he always just says like, I ran out of time, but uh, I just don't think I, I adapted correctly. I, I, sh I feel like I should have gone down to the ground and taken her down and made it a little bit dirtier fight and, and you know, wrestled a little bit more because I did have success with that in the first round. I just, I, you know, I just didn't, I just didn't make the adjustments. And, it, and you know, it's a big learning, a big learning lesson. I mean, for me, it doesn't take away from, you know, what, what I've accomplished. Like, I still have a long way to go and I still believe I'm going to be champion. I lost, but it's okay. You know, some of the best in the world have always lost. They always come back. You know, it's not a big deal. It's not like I got demolished or, you know, I got beat up and, you know, she just beat the crap out of me or something, you know, I, I mean, I fought the former world champion, you know, and I've only been a professional for like a year. And as far as me accomplishing as, but as much as I have, I, I don't think I did that bad at all, you know, and it's just small bump in the road. And now I got to deal with this shit, but <laughs> Uh, I was hoping I was, I was ready to fight. I was ready to go. Like I said, two weeks after my fight, the same time I got the news, I was already ready to sign my contract to get my next fight going. You know, it's like, for me, it's like, okay, I'll dwell on it a little bit. Like not, not even then, you know, I'll feel bad and stuff like that, but that just it motivates me to get back straight to work. And, um, that's kind of like what's happening right now too. It's like, I, I was really bummed out last week when they handed me my nine month suspension, but it's just like, the show must go on. I'm going to continue training. I'm going to stay busy and, you know, hopefully these next six months will pass by and I'll come back stronger and better than before, especially not just physically, but mentally, you know, any other times I've ever had to be held down where I'm not, you know, held back and I've always come back 10 times stronger. So 
I feel bad for whoever I have to fight next. So is that your plan? Next six months, just train, uh, sharpen your skills, things like that. You don't have to, I mean, you were pretty active last year. So it's, do you have to like go get a job or something like that? Where, where do you stand? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably definitely going to try to figure figure things out where I'm still kind of bringing some kind of income, doing something else. Like, I, I, I have to. I mean, last year, it was it's great. You know, you make a ton of money, but then you also have to pay a ton of taxes. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you, you want to prepare yourself this year by for the taxes you got to pay. You know, I didn't know how it was going to unfold, you know, how much I was going to be able to work or what I was my projection was going to be as far as like how much income I was going to make this year. There's a lot of other expenses I had to add, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's more expensive now, the cost of living here in California. A lot of things have changed. I like moved into a new place, got a new car, you know, and then boom, I got this. I'm not gonna be able to make that type of revenue this month, like nine months. I'm not gonna be able to make the amount of money I made last year. No way. And so it, it sucks, but it, it's, it's like, I'll be okay. You know, I'm okay. It just, it just, it just sucks. And you lost a sponsor? Because of this, because of the marijuana suspension. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Body Armor. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they 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 dropped me. I oh. haven't really, they haven't really officially told me that, but I have, I've assumed once they stop sending me stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it just it's just a lot of a lot of things. It's just really. Um, it just really sucks. Like, you know, you go, you go from like being really, really successful. I was like, you know, standing on top of the world and I lose, then I get the suspension and I lose, you know, body armor. And then there's just a lot of other factors. There's a lot of changes going on. And, um, but it's just the way it goes, you know, when it rains, it pours and, you know, I'll be okay. What are the changes? Uh, just, just a lot of per like just personal stuff, you know, okay. just like having to move and just yeah. other other things. By the way, you have a lot of water bottles in back of you. Do you collect water bottles? No, these are <laughs> these are my gla the glass the glass bottles full of uh, uh I have a roommate actually. I mean, I'm in the middle of moving, but he he's all into making sure he uses like glass like oh I like it bottles of water in the mountains and stuff and oh and that's cool spring water. So, uh, yeah, no, that's just the setup right now. We're in the middle of moving, so it's a little, we got stuff all over the place. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on and talking about this, Cynthia. I know it's not, uh, you know, the, the happiest of times, but uh, I will disagree with one thing that you said. I don't think that there is a negative stigma attached to you or this. I think in 2018, a lot of people have very strong feelings um, on this kind of thing and that you were kind of, in, in my opinion, you, you were sort of screwed here, especially, I mean, it's one thing for the USADA suspension, the the added three months and everything that you mentioned regarding, you know, the Nevada Athletic Commission and the chairman being involved. I, there's there's a lot of hypocrisy and uh, I'm no expert when it comes to this stuff, but that is something I feel very strongly about, especially when you have a medical marijuana license. So I wouldn't worry about the way people view you or, you know, losing fans or things like that. You had a great year in 2017. And as you said, everyone loses. Uh, we all expect you to be back then in there, you know, as as a top contender at 115. So uh, don't be too hard on yourself. Keep your chin up. All the best to you. I appreciate you coming on and talking about this. And uh, you'd be surprised how quickly six months go. So uh, I suspect that we'll see you back in there sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely, you know, see me out there. We're still going to continue working hard and, and getting better. So, I mean, it, it doesn't stop. Slow down for a little bit, but definitely not stopping. Good luck to you, Cynthia. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Ari. I appreciate it.